Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and this is part 9 of our Raspberry Pi video series. And in this video, we're talking about running Selenium automated test with Raspberry Pi. And this video is part B of our automated test running using Selenium in Raspberry Pi. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right. So till last video, we were understanding what is Selenium test and how to install Selenium on our Raspberry Pi and what are the prerequisite environment required for getting things ready for running Selenium test on Raspberry Pi. So in this video, actually, we will be trying to run a test on our Raspberry Pi. So for that, I'm going to first flip to Eclipse. So this is the Eclipse IDE for writing the automated test for our Selenium. You can download this IDE for free and you can just Google it and you can download the Eclipse IDE. And I have downloaded the latest version of Eclipse IDE, which is nothing but the Mars release, right? And then I'm going to first create a new project for running the Selenium grid. So let's call this as Selenium grid test project. And I'm going to hit next. And within this uh, libraries, I'm going to add the external jar files. So all my external jar files are sitting under this jar folder. And I actually required the Selenium server standalone jar as well as the Selenium client jar. So I'm just going to add them. And then I'm going to hit finish. Then within the source folder, I'm going to add a new class file. And uh, let's name this as our org.test. And the class name, let's call this as selenium test and let's add a main method there and hit finish so now we have our class ready all i have to do is just run a simple test on my raspberry pi that we have right so the first thing which you need to do is to uh, have our selenium grid server running in our windows 10 machine so for running the selenium grid server in windows 10 machine first of all we need to download the selenium jar file in our windows 10 machine as well so in our previous video actually we downloaded the selenium grid on our windows 10 machine as well it seems like something has been detected i can still hit keep this and i can close this so we have the selenium server available it is also available in my jar folder so i'm just going to open the command prompt and then here i'm going to navigate to my d colon jar and I have selenium standalone server and now I have to make this selenium standalone server as a hub and then I want to make this selenium server to be routing all my request from the IDE to Raspberry Pi or any other machine which act as a node so if you really don't understand the concept of selenium grid and how this selenium grid can be set up and how the redirection of node and grid is actually working you can actually learn all of them from playlist available on our execute automation channel called selenium grid so you can just navigate there and you can see you have something called selenium grid understanding and configuration and selenium grid parallel test execution so you can watch these two videos it's around 44 minutes so just you can watch them and you can understand how things works now we want to make this selenium server as a uh, hub so what i'm going to do i'm just going to type uh, role as hub and if i hit enter oops i think hyphen role as hub and now if i hit enter you can see that it will launch the selenium grid so before i just uh, wrongly gave the parameter and it was just launching the standalone selenium server so now if I give correctly like uh, Java hyphen jar Selenium server standalone hyphen role as hub, you can see that this is launching the Selenium grid hub. And you can see that uh, this time the Selenium grid server is up and running. And this is the URL that we should use to register our nodes, right? So I'm just going to copy this. And if you go to the browser and if you try to uh, navigate to this particular URL, you can see it will bring you up a uh, configuration page. You can just see the console and you can see the configurations, whatever configurations you've got. And now I'm going to open our putty and I'm going to connect to my Raspberry Pi because that's where we are going to run our node. So I'm just going to connect them. Let's log in. 
oops all right so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna run my jars for the selenium here which is available in my selenium directory so Java hyphen jar selenium standalone server and this time the role I'm going to make for this guy is going to be hub but the URL is going to be this so I'm gonna handshake my Raspberry Pi to the selenium server which is up and running in my Windows 10 operating system so I'm just going to register and the port I'm going to use this time is going to be 5557 it'd be and now if I hit the enter you can see that it is launching the node and it is registering with our Windows 10 operating systems uh, selenium grid but I think there will be some problem because of the firewall uh, the firewall will not actually allow you to uh, run this particular port so that's the reason it is taking so much time maybe we'll also get some error so let's quickly go to the uh, windows firewall and for now for this video i'm just going to turn off the uh, firewall completely just for some time and then i will be reverting it back so i'm just going to turn off instead of allowing just a single port just going to minimize that so I think it's just hang because of uh, handshaking. I'm just going to cancel the command and once again I'm going to run this. Alright, so now it seems like it has registered to our Windows 10 machine Selenium server. You can see that the registered node is http colon double slash 192.168.0.8. So this is the IP address of our Raspberry Pi and the port number is 5557 that we just gave in our command line. Right. So right now, these both Selenium node of the Raspberry Pi and the hub of our Windows 10 operating systems are pretty much good. And all I have to do is just write a few line of code to run the test on Raspberry Pi. So let's quickly uh, run the test. So for that, I'm going to write some code here. For the sake of time, I have already uh, written some code. I'm just going to paste them right here. And let's add the missing references. Control one and you can import them control one again import control one import all right good and the driver is missing so i think public static remote web driver driver all right and control one good so you can see that the code is pretty straightforward and simple all i'm doing is like this I'm creating a variable for remote web driver and then I'm using that variable driver in the rest of my code. So I'm first creating a desired capabilities uh, for Firefox and then I'm setting the capability for the platform Linux and then I'm setting the browser name as Firefox. right? And then I'm passing the capability to my object of new instance of remote web driver. And once it is passed, I'm going to navigate to my executeautomation.com slash demo site slash login. So if you have not already saw this website, I can just go over here and I can show you how the page looks like. There we go. So this is the page. I'm just trying to log in as admin and admin and hit login. So all I want to see is if it is logging in or not. That's it. Very, very simple test case. So that's what it is doing right now. So it is finding the element by its name, user name, and sending the key admin, and password by name, and sending the key admin again, and then identifying the login button by name and clicking the submit button. That's it. All I want to see is whether the functionality is working fine or not in my Raspberry Pi's Ubuntu operating system, right? So uh, let's save this code. Right now, as you can see, I have not defined anywhere which URL I have to run all those things because that will be taken care of by my Selenium server which is nothing but my hub Selenium grids hub server to take care of uh, routing the request to the available nodes which is nothing but my Raspberry Pi now if I try to run this test it will actually throw you an error and the reason is because uh, we have not run the test in XPFB so well, let's see what's gonna happen and this is for the class everything is looking good uh there is an error let's see what's the error as add throws declaration 
all right i'm going to save it and now if i try to run this test you can see that we will get an error in our test but actually the test will start running and you can see that it is creating a new session for the browser name firefox and also it's creating a new session for capabilities browser name firefox uh, platform linux which is good which means uh, it is starting to run the test and you can see that our hub is routing the test to the available node which is nothing but this raspberry pi and the test got failed you can see that uh, it says that error no display specified and that's the reason we are going to bring our xvfb so what i'm going to do i will just change this command a little bit so that instead of running the java hyphen jar something like this i'm going to say display of xvfb so this is something which i'm specifying as a command display colon is equal to one and xvfb hyphen run of this particular uh, jar file so this i'm saying that run this particular application which is nothing but our selenium grid in a xvfb environment so that it is mimicking that it is running in a display device virtually so if i just hit enter i'm sorry i think it is uh, display is equal to colon hmm. hit enter there we go so it is now trying to run all right, so the node is already registered, so we don't have any problem. So now, once again, I'm trying to run this test by using run as Java application. And let's see if the test runs or not without any problem. All right, so it's executing the test and you can see that it is finding the element by the name username. And uh, it is also passing the value as admin. And also it's finding the password by the name and it's passing the value as admin and it is clicking the uh, login button so it is performing all the operation without any problem this time so this is how you can make use of your xvfb to perform an operation without having a monitor connected into your raspberry pi so this is the another way that you can mimic like you have already connected to a real monitor with your raspberry pi so that's it guys this is how you can leverage the power of your selenium automation on raspberry pi using selenium grid so that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.